In 2021, I was diagnosed with level 1 autism spectrum disorder. Autism is a developmental disorder that may affect socialization or behavior. It ranges in severity, hence the idea of the spectrum. Though there are many more, symptoms may include a struggle with social communication, repetitive behaviors, and narrowed interests. The condition I have was previously known as Asperger Syndrome, named after Hans Asperger, an Austrian physician. Many regarded him as a heroic figure for autistic children for a long time. But in truth, he was involved with unspeakably horrific programs during the rule of the Third Reich. Asberger was a pediatrician in Vienna and an active Nazi supporter who sent disabled children he regarded as burdens to die in suffering during the Third Reich's euthanasia program between 1939 and 1945. This history has gone unacknowledged for a long time. It impacts the present-day autism community in a significant manner due to the dispute over whether or not we should use the term Asperger's Syndrome. Hans Asperger was born on February 18, 1906 in Hausbrunn. When he was 19, he went off to study at the University of Vienna. He graduated with a medical degree in 1931 and began working as a pediatrician. A year after being hired, he was promoted to director of the college's curative education clinic by his mentor Franz Hamburger. Asberger endured change as the Nazi regime took over Vienna. The University of Vienna removed much of its faculty, many of which were Jews. He never became a direct member of the Nazi party itself, contributing to his heroic reputation. Still, his support for the regime is apparent through the number of Nazi-adjacent organizations he joined. This as well as his involvement with the notorious killing program. The killing, or euthanasia program as the Nazis called it, was known as Actian T4, which stood for Tiergartenstrasse 4. It strived to eradicate individuals deemed unworthy to live. It was mainly those considered to be mentally or physically disabled. The program resulted in 5,000 children and around 250,000 people overall dying. There were centers set up throughout the state for this purpose. The University of Vienna owned one of these euthanasia centers, Am Spiegelgrund, where nearly 800 children perished. The hospital determined whether children were to be sent there or not. Those selected would be drugged or gassed to death by caretakers. What gets overlooked often is that Hans Asberger was a participator and supporter of this horrific process. In 1941, two-year-old Hertha Schreiber arrived at the children's clinic. She suffered from diphtheria and encephalitis. After examination, Asberger wrote, Serious personality disorder, post-encephalitic, major motoric retardation, erethic idiocy, seizures. The child must be an unbearable burden to the mother, who has five healthy children for which to care. Permanent placement in Spiegelgrund seems absolutely necessary. She died a few months after being admitted. The tragedy of Hertha Schreiber is an example of Asperger's chilling involvement with the Nazis. At first, what became acknowledged was not the children he sent to perish, but those he did not. So it may seem peculiar that he received such a benevolent reputation. At a presentation, historian Edith Schaeffer said, Again, some people point to his effusive language about the highly original genius of children, on the most favorable end of the autistic range. And they speculate that he used his, um, the autism diagnosis as a way of protecting children from the killing, saying they're so great, 
he was using the autism diagnosis like a psychiatric Schindler's List, right? Um, because of this, he gets viewed as a savior and opposer of Nazi ideology. It was not until a few years ago that research uncovered the whole truth. And the fact in itself is ironic that he eradicated individuals whom he devoted his life to studying. The victims of the euthanasia programs are considered some of the forgotten Nazi victims. In contrast to other groups like the Jews, Gypsies, Serbs, or Poles, the number of fatalities for the disabled was proportionally low. 250,000 in total perished. Still, it remains an eerie moment in history that reminds us of the potential consequences of our own ignorance and discrimination. Aside from his horrifying actions during Act T4, Asperger had a strange idea of autism. In 1944, he described autistic psychopathy for his postdoctoral thesis. The doctor studied a group of children who displayed characteristics of mild autism. He believed these children were more favorable and more valuable than those with higher support needs. He also claimed that autism occurred exclusively in males, saying it was an extreme variant of male intelligence. For the supposedly unfavorable individuals, Asperger believed they roamed the streets as originals, grotesque and dilapidated, talking loudly to themselves or unconcernedly to passerby as autistic individuals would. They are taunted by urchins and react to this with wild but ineffectual outbursts. In Asperger's eyes, he believed he should condemn people he described as such to death in Spiegelgrund. Decades after the Nazi killings, in 1981, Dr. Lorna Wing gave Asperger's syndrome its name. She was an incredible contributor to the research of autism, but it was the name she gave to the disorder that set up future controversy. In 2013, the American Psychiatric Association removed Asperger syndrome as an official diagnosis from the Diagnostic and Statistical Manual of Mental Disorders that experts worldwide use. Many people, including medical professionals, continued to use the term even though no longer existed, though some did suspect Asperger's possible collaboration with the Nazis at the time. But that is not why the name got changed. It became encompassed under Autism Spectrum Disorder. The actual debate started in 2018, when the first official evidence of Hans Asperger's Nazi participation was published, titled Hans Asperger, National Socialism, and Race Hygiene in Nazi-Era Vienna. It shocked the world and the autism community. The paper is controversial, though. Some don't accept the idea of the pediatrician being a Nazi. Anthropologist Dean Falk criticized the notion in an article, saying that it is highly unlikely that Asperger was aware of the T4 program when he referred Hertha Schreiber to Am Spiegelgrund, and that he campaigned vigorously from 1938 to 1943 to have his specialization, curative education, take priority in the diagnosis and treatment of disabled children over other fields that promoted racial hygiene policies. Still, according to the research, it now seems time to question the ethics of using the name. Many do not acknowledge that the term is officially outdated and potentially morally tainted. As someone who oneself identified with the label, I hope we can use more caution in the future in understanding history before honoring the name and not forgetting the terrifying and underlying force a label can have.